season. They lost five regular season games, three in one two-week stretch. For the second straight season since he took on Oklahoma after losing their first game, which had OU's head coach Kelvin Sampson wondering, quote, are we that powerful that they look ahead to us and screw up the game before us, end quote? Kelvin, them's fighting words. We're at the Lloyd Noble Center. DeMar Johnson is proving this is going to be the Bearcats' night. His uh, shot swatted right into the hoop. Yes, it went down exactly how Oklahoma had hoped it would not. Cincinnati led by 10 at the break. Second half, OU trying to rally. Eduardo Najera, nice move. And the foul. Kelvin Sampson's team within seven, but then it was Kenyon Martin time. Kenny Satterfield, have you seen him? He's hanging around the hoop. Then Martin proving he has the ability to switch hands right around Najera with a lefty floater. And then proving he plays defense. Blocking Nolan Johnson. He had three of those. And then Martin showing range as well. Again with somebody in his face. Game I 23 and Cincinnati wins at 72-57. Bearcats showing some recovery power they didn't have last season. They rebound from their first loss and Oklahoma theirs. Along with his 23 points, Martin 11 of 13 from the floor. Nine boards in those three blocks. Nahara, by the way, missed 15 of 21 shots. OU shot a season low 30%. Princeton and Kansas. Early on, no score. Kenny Gregory changes that. Pretty. Nine points. Tigers by one. Bill Carmody hoping that would change. Kansas still led at the break. Jeff Boshi, the alley oop to Ashante Johnson. 50 34 Jayhawks. Princeton with some shooting issues. Chris Young with the pretty bounce pass, but CJ Chapman with the ugly miss. Kansas now up 15. Nick Bradford drives and finds Johnson for the jam. 16 points for Ashante, and Kansas wins 82-67. Nick Bradford 17 with a season high. Jones Tony Bland driving feeds Damone Brown. He was famished. Some polite applause from the crowd. Syracuse so scored the final nine points of the first half. They kept it going in half two. Bland, the long J, he had 13. Syracuse wins this one 68-52. Syracuse eight home games. Eight wins this season. The Orangemen playing their first game. Out of 30, had a medal out of Alex Jensen, one of the best shooters in the nation, so of course he misses once and twice. That's going to hurt your average. However, it finally goes. Utes up by two. Utes up by four now. Metal off. Gets the ball, and Darren Kelly abuse. Bank, he called it. Metal off playing in just his second game of the year after that knee injury. Utes by six. Second half game tied at 49. Metal are going for the easy two, but Chris Mim, I do not think so. An old-time center he is. As a result of the block, Chris McAlpin shoots the three, doesn't go, but Mim, persistence pays off. He had 19, Longhorns up by two, 51-49. Just over two minutes to play, Utes up by three, Jensen the medal who buries the three from the wing. He had 32, and the Utes win their 42nd straight at home, the final 79-73. Buckeyes down one. Scooty Penn to Ken Johnson, not normally known as a scorer, but he gets that to go. Trey thinks it's traveling, but it wasn't. The Buckeyes take the lead. Next possession, Ohio State, nice ball movement. Distribution, Penn finding Michael Red. He's a good shooter. He gets 17. 10 seconds left, Toledo needing a three to tie. Albert Wilson looking for an open teammate, and steady finds Penn. The great interception down the stretch. Toledo coach Stan Joplin, a god. Ohio State wins 64-61. The Buckeyes may not want to schedule Toledo. Change. Tubby Smith trying to see if times could revert to the old ways. Early first half, off the Spartan miss. Keith Bogans on the run, and who needs teammates? Laying up and throwing down for two of his six. Minutes later. For the Spartans, Charlie Bell getting extended playing time with the team cleaves out. Bell, inside penetration, feeds Jason Richardson for two of his four. Spartans up early, and they would add to that gap. Up by nine when Morris Peterson nails a three ball. He had 18. They led by as many as 15 in the first half. But the Cats come back. J.P. Flevins on the miss, but Jamal McGlure crashing the glass. Dick Vitale, how about the aggressive? Watch McGlure get into the offensive rebounding lane. He steps right into the lane, grabs it with those long arms, and knows how to convert on the interior. Jamal, 11 boards, catch down just one at the break. Second half, Tayshawn Prince. Remember that three-point shooting I said? No problems here. He had three of them, catch within four. Now watch this as he steps out to the top of the circle. Freeze it right here. See this? He's stepping out, reverse the ball, gets here, squares his body. He's going to knock that baby down. Hoops, we thank you. Now Kentucky down only two. Blevins, a big three ball to give the Cats their first lead since 2-0. They're up by one. 
Meanwhile, Coach Tom Izzo playing the part of interview with a vampire with Charlie Bell. Actually, it was great coaching. A.J. Granger will miss and watch Bell responding to the bark and the bite of Izzo. He had eight Spartan down only two. After Kentucky miss now, clock ticking down. Granger trying to tie it with the drive to Andre Hudson. Contact, yes. Foul, no. Basket, no. Tip, no good. And Kentucky extracts a matter of revenge. Tubby Smith's wife loving it. Prince and the Cats are the victors. UK wins 60 to 58. Thus, Kentucky gets their revenge coming from as many as 15 down. All of J.P. Blevins' nine points came on threes. Tough. Reese gains with the steal, and then he feeds the alley-oop to some other dude. It's Marcus Maven. Cardinals up 11. Then Maven making a name for himself with the steal, and this time he'll do it all himself. A 14-2 run sealed it at the half. Louisville up by 15. Where is Carolina going? Second half, Louisville in control. Nate Johnson will launch the three. Inside and outside, it was going down for the Cardinals. Johnson, a career-high 31, and Louisville stuns North Carolina by 17. Porter off the Fairfield miss, which would be a theme. Jake Voskel with the rebound and the outlet to Kevin Freeman. And I'm sorry, style does matter. Freeman with the finish. He had 14 points. UConn by eight at the break. Mid-second, Khaled Alamini could not hit, but that's okay because Suleiman Juan wandering in the lane. Four points, four boards. Huskies by eight. Late in the game, the freshman Justin Brown in denial. UConn the other way to another freshman, Tony Robertson with the stick. Robertson led UConn with 22 points. Elamine shot just one for 13, but it just doesn't matter. 84-60 is the final. On South Florida, and this thing got wild. Under 30 seconds to go, tied at 85. Jerome Moiso out there, the Earl of Watson. Three of five behind the arc. UCLA by three with 15 kicks left. But Seth Greenberg has a plan, and that plan is to find B.B. Walden. B.B., he'll shoot your eye out. 23 for him on the night. Game tied at 88. We're going to go to some free basketball in overtime. UCLA up by two. Ryan Bailey feeding. Oh, Moiso, repent and be baptized. 20 points for him. Steve Lavin's Bruins hang on. 103 to 98. Lavin called this game, quote, just what the doctor ordered. Watson and Moiso, 20 each. Watson added seven assists. Moiso, eight boards. The freshman, Jason Capono, with 17. And to update you on the numbers, Bruins now average over 90 points per game in their six wins. And about half of that, or a little more than half of that, about 48 in their two losses. To the house, Dimitri Hillville. The Gators hosting UNC Wilmington. Gators by two. Kenyon Weeks with the steal. Oh, if you can bounce pass well, you can play at any level. Mike Miller, 20 in the game. Gators just by five at the break, but Billy Donovan's crew gets it going in the second half. Weeks, another steal. Take care of business himself. Rising and ramming, 1,000th career point. Gators up by a dozen, and then Udonis Haslam. The slider comes Teddy Dupay. Donovan's wanted his team to give up the ball, and he does it nicely there to Justin Hamilton. Five assists for Dupay, nine points for Hamilton. Gators roll, 80 to 53. Donovan has pushed Miller to be more from Q. He can pass. Paul McPherson. The ball 56 to 40, and the next time the Blue Demons have the ball, Richardson wants to show it to you from outside again. He would have 20. You know, either Richardson or Kenyon Martin of Cincinnati, easily the most dominant players I've seen so far in college basketball this year. 82-61, the Blue Demons.